There was something ominous about the first email waiting in my inbox this morning. Yuri Bogdanov, a name I hadn't heard since college. I remember a blonde, muscular guy with thick black glasses who wore shorts in the winter, loved football, studied English literature, but nothing in those blurry memories would explain why Yuri was writing me now. Four years later, in the midst of a war, no less, I felt a pang of guilt for not contacting him when the conflict began. He'd clearly followed my career enough to know my work email, as the small zine where I worked, the unexplained quarterly. We get a daily barrage of emails about hauntings, cryptid sightings, UFO abductions, possessions, and other bizarre events. 99% of our leads are trash, but the other 1% are, well, unexplained. And that's where I come in. I investigate, clarify for the reader, build on the information we receive. But Yuri's email was blank. There was no information. Just an attachment with a Cyrillic name. My cursor hovered over the delete button. And what if it was a virus? I'd catch hell if I let anything under our work system. And in the end, curiosity got the better of me. I shut my eyes and I clicked. It seemed to be a scan of some sort of transcript, a military transcript. When I ran it through a translator and read through the results, the results were choppy, but by the time I finished reading, I... I understood why Yuri contacted me again, after all these years. To avoid incriminating or exposing anyone, I've changed the names, and I won't specify the location except to say that the events that are transcribed here took place in rural southeastern Ukraine in mid-February of 2022. State your name and rank for the record. Lives Sinovich. Sora Shilov. Sergeant. Voroshilov? Like the old general. No relation, I suppose. They tell us you're behind the line, boys are savages. Fanatics. Tell us you won't talk, not even under torture, is that right? Don't fuck with me. They picked me up from the army because I flunked out of engineering school, and I'm not related to any general. Well, let's get the facts then. What were you and your comrades doing behind our lines? And how many of you are there? My group. Ten. But there's probably others. I suppose you'll find out soon enough. <laughs> They call it irregular warfare. What it really means is torching supplies, getting off bombs in civilian areas, blaming it on the enemy. Instead of military targets, our groups target the soft side. Supplies, morale, disinformation, soft targets. Like you. Cooperative, aren't you? Makes me wonder if you're lying. Interrogator's note. Subjects visibly disturbed, trembling, eyes darting around the room, signs of mania in his speech patterns. Something's obviously got to him. I told you don't fuck with me. My side will arrange an accident for me if they even think I talk to you. Then they'll tell my grandmother I died a hero. The moment I opened my mouth, I was good as dead. But I'd rather be killed by them than it. All right. Well, let's start with the events that led up to your capture, shall we? You were taken in in an abandoned cabin, where six of your comrades were also found dead. Ah! Interrogators note the subject begins to scream until his throat was too hoarse to continue. The screams then turn to giggles, and then to laughter. All right. So what's the joke? The joke is everything. Everything in this fucking miserable world is the joke, but look, I'll tell you how my part in it begins. As I said, there were ten of us. We were surprised by a patrol after setting fire to a grain depot. Sergei got popped right away. See the stain on my uniform? Just below the shoulder? That's what's left of him. He was going to get married this fall. You already know about the depot fire. What happened next? Rustan, Michael, covered our retreat through the woods. They took on a whole patrol of you people, with only three trucks to protect them, just so that we could escape. I don't know where Michael was shot, but he screamed a lot. And Rustan, 
I was going to ask if you knew what happened to him, but he's dead. It's written all over your faith. Rustin is dead. Can't confirm or deny that. Were you aware that you were retreating deeper into our territory? Aware? Was I aware of my heart galloping like a goddamn racehorse? I was aware. I was aware of the pine trees whipping my face and the way my boots sank into the mud. The only thing I was aware of was that I was running for my life. The cabin where you were found, 13 kilometers from the grain depot. You ran very far. Indeed. Didn't feel like it. Time acts funny when you're under fire. You're older than me, but you've never been to the front, have you? I can see it in your eyes. Let's get back on track. What happened after you reached the cabin? It's like something out of a dream. Like the place had been abandoned back when there was a czar. That wooden roof covered in pine needles. Those foot-thick, whitewashed walls. Wasn't even a path to get there. He was just waiting for us. In the middle of the woods. Didn't it occur to you that anyone looking for you would search the structure? Command told us our gear would be thick enough to survive outdoors in the winter. He lied. Even if we slept in the woods, we, we would have been found by chattering of our teeth. Kicked in the door to clear the place. There was nothing. Some sagging old furniture, rat's nests in the corners, soot in the chimney. The temperature was dropping, so it was better than the forest. We barred the doors, we got as comfortable as we could, nobody talked much. We were exhausted. Keyed up on adrenaline. All at the same time, I'd never felt anything like that before. I hope I never do again. All right. Let's jump ahead to, to when Michael came back, right? <laughs> that, that's why we're really here, isn't it? That's why you idiots wasting time and resources on nobodies like me. Around what time? Midnight. Just after midnight. Interrogator's notes. Till now, the subjects avoided talking about this critical moment. The subject's unfocused eyes, change of tone, and slackened facial muscles suggest that he's disassociating himself from a memory, one that he's unable to process. It was dark. We could barely see our own white breath in the moonlight. We heard something pawing at the door. Ice cracked on the knob when it turned. We readied our rifles. The old wooden door squealed open. Subjects become unresponsive. When touched, he began to scream. Guards removed him to his cell to await tomorrow's interrogation. So, here we are again. And the one we left off, please. Please, just shoot me. Don't make me remember. When I close my eyes, I can still see it. See his muddy combat boots coming through the doorway. Whose muddy combat boots? Michaels! Michaels, you bastard! Do I have to spell everything out for you? Michael. The one who was shot? Had he recovered from his wounds? We, we couldn't tell. It was too dark. All we could see was his uniform, the profile of his face. It was Michael, all right. No, it sounds crazy, but we started laughing our heads off, laughing in pure relief that he was alive and that we hadn't been trapped by one of your patrols. Pretty soon we were touching his clothes like he was Christ to come back to life. But something... Something was wrong. It's just his silence or the odd way he moved. Michael, he... No little clouds of white breath came out of his mouth and his skin. His skin was cold, so very cold. Did anyone attempt to give Michael medical attention? Bogdan, our medic, he tried. Then everything went to hell. Michael grabbed Bogdan's throat. And we heard the snapping sound, you know, like a toothpick breaking in half. Then drool was dribbling out of Bogdan's lips. His eyes were like marbles. No life to them. So without saying a word, Michael attacked your squad. How did they react? We couldn't process it. We'd been through so much together, seeing Michael break Bogdan's neck in front of our eyes. It would have been like your own mother casually walking up to your little sister and cutting her heart. 
No one wanted to shoot Michael. Thought it might be PTSD or pain or anything except for what it was. Bogdan, he was a big guy. If it wasn't for the war, he never would have been allowed to serve. But Michael lifted him up like a stuffed doll then. He used Bogdan's corpse to block the door. By that point, guns were out. We were screaming at Michael to put his hands up to get down on the ground. In the end, in the end, we started shooting. Didn't make any difference. Did Michael have some kind of special armor or it didn't make any difference because Michael was already dead? Our bullets had no impact. The whole grisly scene was lit only by gunfire, like a disco from hell. The noise was deafening. It was like he was everywhere at once. In the, in the muzzle flash, we could see him. Half of Michael's head was missing, but somehow he was smiling. I don't know who ran first, but the rest of us followed. We were tripping over furniture, we were breaking glass, we were slamming into walls. It was total chaos. He took our weapons as easily as an adult taking away some misbehaving children's toy. The ear splitting racket finally stopped at the pitch of blackness returned. We knew it was over. We were backed into a corner of the cabin's kitchen like a, like a herd of sheep cornered by a wolf. A wolf that didn't need to breathe. Someone further, I think, was trying to run, and there was this wet sound like meat being thrown on a slab. We felt him thrown back with the rest of us. Ivan, where are you, Ivan? You killed seven people, Ivan! Cold hands reached past my shoulders, grabbing Ivan Rachmaninoff. He started screaming. The rest of us did, too. It was pitch black couldn't see what was happening, but we could hear it. We could smell it. we feel the wet splatter like paint that hit our faces. Ivan Rachmaninoff uh, was found with seven wounds of undetermined cause. Undetermined cause? Michael tore out seven fistfuls of him. Ripped out his fucking intestines. And then he came for the rest of us. One by one, he called us in the dark like... Like we were kids playing hide and seek. Alexei, you killed five. Five lights have gone out in the world because of you, Alexei. Now it's your turn. Was it true? What Michael said? What do you think? Not like we counted the people we shot, but yes, I think so. You found two others with three chunks gone, right? Hearts, liver, spines. Another missing both eyes and a fourth. Just missing his head. Took one piece of each of us for every life we took. So why are you here? I fired my gun like everyone else. I'm not a traitor. But you didn't kill anyone. Did you? I... I, I, I always fire over their heads. A little to the left or right. Maybe I did it unconsciously. Who knows? It was different in training. With a target in front of me as a crack shot, when the target's lighting a cigarette, stretching, chatting with his friends, I just... I just... I, I, I couldn't... Interrogator's note. The subject buried his face in his hands and wept silently for several minutes. It was pitch black in the kitchen of that abandoned cabin. The air smelled like frost and ashes and, and the entrails of my friend. A rich, rotten smell like cooking liver and onions. I knew that they were dead because I couldn't hear them gasping or screaming. But whatever Michael had become, he didn't breathe. But he was there. His hands were cold and bloody as refrigerated meat. He passed them over my hands, my neck, my face like he was feeling for something. You haven't taken a single life. Hmm. What to do with you? You can go. Go and tell them I'm coming. Tell them my name is War. I just want to make sure that I'm understanding you. You claim that you are part of a guerrilla force operating behind our lines. When surprised by a patrol, you took refuge in the cabin where you were found along with... 
along with those mutilated corpses. You claim they were killed by a dead man. I claim I'm telling the truth, you goddamn idiot. You don't get it. You don't get it at all. He's still out there, Michael. Or, or the thing that he's become. Still out there. He's war. He isn't going to stop. You shot one of the patrol that brought you in. His name was Danilo Nikifrov. He was 22 years old and he died of his wound. Did you know that? Uh, I, I, I didn't mean to, I swear. I, I thought Michael was back. I thought he was coming to finish me off. I, I thought... This concludes my interview with Sergeant Lev Simonovich. Simonovich will be moved to a holding facility and observed for further mental issues. Interrogator's note. Lev Simonovich was found dead two months after his disposition. He was found in the prison yard after a heavy snowfall. One of his eyes... Um... had been torn from his skull. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to tell you thank you for watching tonight's video, or listening to tonight's episode of the podcast, and as always I want to give a very big thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. If you scroll down to the description at the very bottom you'll find a whole bunch of people there. Also we've included this nice little scrolling thing because the number of people who support me on Patreon has gotten so big that I'm afraid it might actually max out the description. So we've, we've included this here as the little scrolling text on the end screens. So everybody on that scrolling text, everybody I'm about to mention right now and mispronounce all of your names and everybody who can donate even $1. Thank you so much. A very big thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Reaper61167, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Dickie McQuickie, Sam High, Crusader Chocobo, Spooky Shell, Adam Maros, Grand Moth the Milky, Big Smoke 369, Captain Scurvy, Salty Irish Poet, Esteban, Raiden Morris, Nate Cull, Horror Fan 1212, Hour Minute Second Time, Kyle Resnack, David Martin, Scarrington the Unkempt, Robert Malcolm, Angelus, Spanky, Snoochie Boochie, Seclude, Lupita Galvin, That Creepy Chick, Tyler Fletcher, Merxenum, Red Shadow Cat, Xavier the Cheyenne, Demix, Sean Catabaker, Six Gay Rats in a Trench Coat, Turtle Man, Rob Like Sharp Things, Cryolinian, Xavier Graphius, Lord Life's Best, Goring from Magazine, Maria Walker, Emily Mitchell, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Eka Limchok, Dirt Diver, o Matt Bach, Voice of Sand, Coffee Zombie, Hidden Tiger, Shelly J, Jeremy H, Psychomel, Nana, The Leader Account, Melted Lake, Tali Sue, William King, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Bardo Hawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Sashi Sazaku, Cronut 509, Kaylee Ambrose, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Freddy Krueger, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Benjamin Welverick, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Fester's Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Raphael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, and Corey Kenshin. As always, thank you guys so, so much because you guys help me do everything that I do here. You guys help pay authors for stories and commission stories and do everything that I can do to make this channel and make this podcast the best it could possibly be. So thank you all for supporting me here. And as always, everyone, sweet dreams.